We want to check back in now with Diane Ako. She is live in Honolulu tonight. Hey, Diane. Hi, Mika. I am still here at Kiwalo Basin where I've been for a few hours. Uh, conditions weather wise haven't changed too much. The breeze has picked up a little bit. There have been some light drizzles, but it's been uh, pretty overcast, pretty gray uh, around this whole general south South Shore area. Earlier, maybe like 30 minutes ago, I was listening to Brenton's live shot. He was live in Winnowin, Oahu, in like Ka'a'ava, and he was saying the ocean was churning. But that is not the case at all here on the South Shore. Actually, I'm going to have Glenn uh, just pan over and give you a wide look at what's happening from over here. So, you can see some people are fishing. We did talk to a few people who were storm chasers, just wanting to take pictures of what all was going on. Other people just seeming to kill time. Uh, nobody seemed terribly concerned about what was going on over here. So I just wanted to tell you, as I was about to go live, like literally seconds before, I came across this gentleman over here who said he was willing to talk to us. Uh, it happened all so quickly, I didn't even get his name. So hi. hi. Let's talk. I'm going to put my mask on so I can come closer to you. So what's your name? So my name is Greg. Greg what? Greg Cantero. Greg Cantero. Uh, and of Eva Beach. Eva Beach resident. And you're here because of what? Um, so I'm here in the area because I'm waiting actually for one of my friends who works at the um, up at the Civil Defense for Civil Air Patrol. He's a, um, he, he runs kind of a logistic side for them and um, just killing time waiting for him. I'm also a, a team member um, of the Eva Beach um, Community Emergency Response Team. Oh. Um, we don't normally get activated till after an event. Um, so right now I'm just killing time. So those those are like neighborhood community groups, right? That help kind of take care of your community. Yes. So in the event of a, a massive, you know, hurricane or some, something like that, we, we would go out and try to assist the community, um, whether that's, you know, letting HPD, HFD, um, or other rescue services know, like, you know, there's people here, or there's people, um, you know, trapped in a, in a Say uh, we look at other events, Flooding like, um, stuff. like uh, when Japan had that hurricane or uh, the tsunami, mm -hmm. typhoon, and things like that. Like there's people trapped on a on a rock or something in the middle of the water, and they can't necessarily get away. Um, so we're kind of just extra eyes, ears, and hands for that. Right, smart. Taking like a micro focus on your community. Yes. Have you had to uh, work other disasters as part of that uh, community team? Fortunately, um, no, because we haven't had anything seriously enough for that. Um, but I have been here for a bunch of other events and stuff like that. Um, we haven't seen much casualties, mm -hmm. so it's a good thing. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's good for us. It's yeah. good for everybody else. So, I mean, right now, nobody seems to be worried about it. That's what I noticed too. Yeah. Everyone's just like, you know, any normal day. Tell me what the preparation process is for your um, community group. For us, we just, you know, make sure that we go over our gear. You know, we have um, first aid kits. Um, we normally carry a lot of water on us. So if we come across people, we can give them some water. Um, if they need medical attention. We all have basic first aid um, at the very minimum. Um, I have some friends that are a part of other rescue groups and they have, you know, up to like trauma level, EMT level um, mm. certifications and stuff like that. So they can help out in whatever capacity they need. Um, a lot of us are, you know, just heavy go-getters. So we can go out and we'll chop up a tree that's in, in the middle of the street just to get it out of the way and just to help the community. What a good guy. Tell me about the uh, COVID preparations. I'd been talking to civil defense planners and, you know, you got to work that in this year. Do you feel your community is prepared and as and also do you feel your team is prepared um unfortunately i cannot speak on behalf of anybody else other than myself and the people that i work under um but personally um for us it's just a, a thing about you know carrying antibacterial wipes and um hand sanitizer and things that will allow us to be more sanitized when we come from victim to victim or from survivor to survivor so for us we still one big thing has always been latex gloves, so we'll always be wearing gloves, even if we're wearing work gloves. So we'll wear the latex gloves, and then over that, we put our work gloves on. And then so we don't try to transfer any germs or bacteria to other people. But that's a big thing is working with sanitation, such as antibacterial yeah. wipes and hand sanitizer. So that's a, it's, for us, we think it's a, it's a really good step. We haven't seen a lot of other people do it, like, um, like other, major groups mm -hmm. um, but for us personally we we always are big on sanitation so. does it make you nervous because i was at the convention center earlier where there was a lot of um 
people sheltering and some people, I mean, we hear about this happening in the community, but they had their masks down under their chin or not on at all. And they were curious. So they came like super close to me like this and they didn't have their mask on. You must encounter that a lot. Um, I do personally. I'm always about, you know, trying to protect others before myself. And that does go against that spectrum. Um, as far as if you're wearing your mask incorrectly, you might as well not be wearing it at all. Right. And, um, so it, it does bug me a little bit, but at the same time, I have no authority to tell anybody what they can and cannot do. Yes, you do. You're the certified community event planner, uh, emergency planner. Yes. But um, so, I mean, there, there's a very thin line as to what we can do as, you know, other human beings and civilians and stuff like that. So, I mean, if I ask somebody, hey, can you put your mask on properly? Um, it's their, their choice whether or not they're going to do it or not. Um, and people nowadays, they get very... Um, aggressive I know. when you tell them something that they don't want to hear. Yeah. So that's another thing, you know, especially being um, somebody who's publicly working in the community, you have to uh, balance that. Whereas you can suggest something, you can tell something, but you can't force something. You can't right. force anybody. Luckily, to do we're a pretty nice state and we haven't seen the kind of like severe violence that they've had for yes. like on the mainland, right? Yes. We were very fortunate for that. So what are your thoughts on the hurricane? Are you nervous? Um. I guess I've been around for so many events in Hawaii where, you know, we have tsunami threats, we have hurricane threats, and nothing ever comes to fruition, which we're very fortunate for. So I guess you could say I've kind of been in a relaxed state about it. Um, and I guess that's the way that the rest of the state is because all they're really doing to prepare is get gasoline. <laughs> um, but I mean, other than that, um, I'm not really too nervous about it. I'm kind of the, the type of person that I'll take, take my cards that are dealt to me. Um, and I'll do whatever I need to do to work forward from whatever disaster comes. So yes, I am prepared, um, but I mean, we never know yeah. what's really gonna happen. And um, are I you, mean, when you were out here, were you like sizing up the, um, the wind and the waves and the weather for any sort of statistical purposes for your work or just waiting for your friend? Um, not really statistical for any, any work related things, but um, I do like to get a, you know, a little grip ahead of everybody else so it does help to come outside and you know see if there's um something very close to the shore mm -hmm. um now i do know that i'm on the wrong side of the island to, to be doing that yeah. um, i know that the north shore is supposed to be getting the brunt of it um but normally when you come out to like a, a shoreline you can tell like something's coming a storm's coming so that's really why i came and also because i was curious about why everybody is still fishing <laughs> <laughs> they said that the fish come in closer to shore before a storm I don't know how true that is. Um, I, I'm a very amateur fisherman at, at best, so. But. I'm not a fisher at all. I'm gonna have to take their word for it. But we, uh, my colleague Brenton Awal was up in Ka'ava earlier and there was already storm surge and sand. And you know, the DOT was preparing for the possibility of more erosion because that Kamehameha Highway area is already kind of uh, hard to deal. It's sketchy, yeah. you know? Yes, it, it very is. Um, I was actually at Lagoon Drive earlier, um, pro probably about an hour ago. And there's probably 25 fishermen up there fishing. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to no us. Problem. We really appreciate this. And I hope that, uh, well, our whole island really stays safe. Yes. So thanks a lot. So there you have it. We talked to um, a member of the community who takes his volunteer time to look out for other people within his uh, little neighborhood community. Um, he said that he's prepared. But like so many other people, we're all just waiting and watching to see and hoping that it doesn't get any worse. We are live at Kuala Basin. Diana Ko, KITV4 Island News. All right. Thank you, Diana. And before you go, we just want to ask you. So I know earlier, you know, you had stopped by certain places in Honolulu and one of those was the Hawaii Convention Center, right? Where um, there's mm -hmm. 300 or so people who have taken shelter there. So kind of give us a recap of what you saw there earlier. I know we didn't have video back then. Yes. Um, when I was at the convention center, it was like three hours ago, there were I was told there were like 50 people inside. Um, a good portion of them were houseless people or seemed to be. There were some actually sleeping on the sidewalk in front of the convention center, uh, some smoking um, by that big statue in the front, and then a line of people waiting to get in. Um, it's a pet friendly area apparently, so I saw a lady taking her uh, dogs inside. As you know, when you show up at these shelters, 
nothing is provided for you, so you have to take all of your belongings. So it's not like uh, images we might have seen of Hurricane Katrina where there's all cots set up and everything like that. It's just people and their bags. You go. They wouldn't even let me inside. They said that um, they would provide images because they're really just trying to keep it uh, very sterile. Um, but so they, they take people's temperatures uh, as they walk in. It's Everything seemed to be under control, and it did seem to be uh, rather rather popular. Anyways, I am going to close it up from here. We will keep monitoring what's happening in urban Honolulu. Live in Kiwalo Basin, Diana Ko, KITV4 Island News. All right. Thank you so much, Diane.